planet that a single sentence would not sum up, it's Steve. Far too hard to be who he is. To be here. He called me a capitalist pig the one time for no reason. That's actually true. intelligent, always asking really interesting questions, um, a real sweetheart, always ready to help. Um, one of the few kids I didn't have to sort of beg to help. I wanted to be a basketball star and a baseball star. Unfortunately, in our family, we're not terribly athletically gifted, any of us, so. But he always aspired to something better. Um, he sort of got into music, I guess, more into his mid, well, early teens. You know, at first it was the usual, you know, pop groups, but then, uh, and Eminem, of course, he was huge into Eminem. I was like nine to but 12. then I played the Ramones for him one day, because, you know, I love the Ramones. I got to hang out with them. You know, they were part of the reason I became a punk and started playing him that kind of music, and he just kind of went, wow. That's cool, and yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, got him down on the right path. Uh, my dad's a magician. A magician? A pirate magician. He has a ring routine. He's like probably one of the best ones in the world. This is like, because he goes, most ring artists only use like two rings, and then, or they'll go like, we'll just use like three or four, but he goes from using two to using like four to using six back down to using like two and ending with two. So he starts with two, goes up to six at the most, and then goes back down to two at the end. It's pretty incredible how he does it. Actually, I think he knew how to patch my sound system together better at the age of three and four than when he was 10. <laughs> he kind of forgot at nine and 10 what he knew at three and four. One day we're, I'm doing this uh, Christmas party. I've got him and his two sisters with me, and uh, we're in the beautiful theater at the uh, library at uh, Burnham Thorpe Library. And um, so I'm getting some stuff ready, and I'm by the side of the stage, and Stephen, who's about you know about waist high, comes up to me, and says, "Dad, how long before the show?" I said, "Oh, about five minutes." Next thing. Uh, I and the 200 plus people in the theater knew, Stephen's at the microphone, which he had tipped down like this so he could turn it up, and he goes, the show will be starting in five minutes. And Great Big C had just had a hit with their album Up. Now I knew them from Mohawk College, because when I was in the journalism program there, I'd gone and interviewed them for Common Hour, and they were amazing. We spent, you know, an hour and a half hanging out, talking, you know, playing songs for each other. And it was only a year later, so they still kind of remembered me. And I brought the kids to Faculty Hollow, because it's a nice sort of outdoor thing. And as they were getting set up, I was like, hey, Daryl. He's like, hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. I said, I got my kids. You got your kids here. He said, oh, you got to come bring them in to meet us. Because that's the kind of guys they are. So, okay. Because they'd been playing Great Big C for the kids, and they loved it. They absolutely loved it. In the car, you know, Ricky's boat is painter. You know, what kid doesn't love that? So they're like, oh, wow, we get to hang out with them. So we took them backstage, and they met the kids and got them to here, get them some juice, you know. And then later, when they were playing the gig, they dedicated a song to the kids. 
And later at school the next day, the kids were like, oh, we make a great big scene. But none of their little friends had heard of them because they hadn't hit, you know, the 10-year-old level they yet. They dedicated Run, Run Away. Yeah, they dedicated Run, Run Away. Stephen loved that song, Run, Run Away. And they came home, Mommy, we want to know what a great big scene is. I said, don't worry. They will. Well, that night they were watching YTV, as they usually did. And Great Big C was on YTV being interviewed, and they actually, I hear this, ah! and they came running into the kitchen because I was making supper. Mommy, mommy, Great Big C said hi to us on TV. Because <laughs> they remembered my kids from the night before. That is stupid, I believe that. I'm Steven's dad. Uh, he's 17, he plays in a band. I think it's great, you know. He comes, uh, seems to be show business in his blood. I've been making a living as an entertainer for my whole life. My daughters claim I have street cred. St they still have street cred because I uh, did uh, either six or eight Mr. Dress Up episodes. Steven's been passionate about music since he was about two. childhood, went to a French immersion school, they called Dauphin School, where uh, I learned how to speak French. Had some friends there, um, got picked on a lot, got teased a lot for like liking poetry and whatnot, having ripped jeans. Wasn't cool to have ripped jeans, I guess, but I had them because I liked them. Uh, yeah, I was always kind of a bit of an outcast and like, elementary school just because I was different from everyone else. Um, uh, kind of like once I got to um, you know grade seven and eight you know that still K through green teas and whatnot but I also started making more friends. When I talked to him he was quite friendly but I didn't see him hang out with too many people often. In grade eight he came in and I sat beside him for a while yeah, I don't really remember much except for he was all into like the army or the, I don't know, something like that. And he would read gun magazines during reading time. So I want to be in the military, believe it or not. Uh, as my grandfather was a retired general, so that kind of had an influence on it. As an army cadet. He was like the browner kid in army cadets. Always had everything done like 100% proper. Uh, around 15, I kind of like views started shifting, um, started having some realizations, realized the military wasn't what I supported or believed in, and that it wasn't like a means for peace. I've seen him over the years, I have known him since grade 9, and uh, he's gone like stages, kind of like, just, just sort of themes, I guess, just, uh, just he's gone to the sports phase, you know, and then he went to this punk rock stage, and now he's sort of going through this grunge stage, where he kind of thinks he's, in a way, Kurt Cobain. Like, he was just another kid, he listened to U2. He seemed pretty sweet. He talked about you two a lot in grade nine. I remember one of the first things he said to me is he wanted to be the Prime Minister of Canada. Mm, I remember Steve from grade nine, so he was pretty goofy in grade nine. Uh, a lot different from the Steve we know today. There's been a couple teachers here that I haven't gotten along too well with. Uh, I won't name them, but most of the teachers I've had I've thought we're great teachers, and I've learned a lot from all my teachers, regardless of whether I like them or not. How do you think your teachers would describe you? He was hardworking. Um, he always answered questions, no matter what. He always had an opinion on something. Opinionated. He was really talkative in class. Talkative. And uh, he had a lot of